Welcome, everyone. It's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Tamia Bacha of UIUC. We have the host the title of the Swan Lund and Lund Chair, a Center of Advanced Study Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And he's also the professor of the Coordinated Science Laboratory, a professor in the Information Trust Institute, and affiliate professor of the Mechanical Science Engineering Department. He's also the director of the Center for Advanced Study. And at the IOC, he has also served as the interim dean of engineering and the interim director of the Batman Institute for Advanced Science and Technology. He's a member of the US National Academy of Engineering, fellow of IEEE, as fact and science, a past president of the IEEE Control Systems Society, and a founding president of the International Society of Dynamical Games, and a past president of the American Automatic Control Council. He has received a countless list of awards, including the highest rewards of HPE uh, Control System Society, AFAC, uh, AACC, and ISDG, and the IEEE Control Systems Technical Field Award in a number of international honorary doctorates and professorships, and most recently, an honorary doctorate from uh, KTH of Sweden. And he has over 900 publications in systems control, communications optimization, networks, dynamic games, including game, book books on non-cooperative dynamic game theory, robust control, network security, wireless communication networks, and stochastic networks. And he was also the edit editor-in-chief of the flagship control journal Automatica between uh, 2004 and 2014. He, he is currently the editor of several book series. So without further ado, let's welcome Professor Tamir Basha. Basha, the time is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and thanks for the invitation. And this is a, a Control Meets Learning, is a, which is the title of the seminar series is a very timely topic and and I'm pleased to be to be a part of that as a as a speaker. Uh, so the uh, the title of my talk is uh, definitely there will be learning in it and and a strong component of control and robustness and uh, and the title is policy optimization for linear optimal control with guarantees of robustness. And, and this is a, a joint work with my uh, student, Kai Ching Zhang, and, uh, and my colleague uh, uh, at Illinois, Bin Hu. And, and Kai Ching is actually in the job market this year. So uh, if uh, there are any openings, then, then, then you could uh, contact him for a faculty position. So uh, uh, let me... Uh, uh, share with you the, the outline of the talk. And uh, this, I'll first start with a brief introduction to reinforcement learning, and, and which we all know is, uh, we use the acronym RL, uh, and, and uh, policy optimization, uh, PO. And I'll talk about policy optimization for controller design. And as I indicated at the beginning, there are strong robustness elements in this work. And, uh, and so I'll uh, introduce different ways of approaching robustness in control system design and, uh, and concentrate on uh, one particular uh, approach, which is a mixed design. And that's uh, uh, H2 optimization subject to uh, some H infinity uh, bound, robustness bound. And this has, uh, as we'll see, has strong connection to risk sensitive controller design. The mixed design itself is a, is a deterministic sort of design problem, but the risk sensitive controller design involves a stochastic system and, and, and there is uh, almost an equivalence uh, between the two. And, uh, and these problems uh, are quite challenging, the mixed design problem, as well as the risk sensitive controller design 
using policy optimization uh, because uh, uh, it's uh, non-convex. Uh, uh, the objective function is non-convex in terms of the parameters. And, uh, and then there is lack of coercivity, which means that without the, the, the cost uh, going to infinity, you could go to the, uh, uh, quickly escape to the boundary of the uh, uh, stability region and uh, as well as the, the uh, robustness region. And, and so we introduced what's uh, uh, called the implicit regularization and, and we come up and, and show that there are two uh, policy optimization methods in, in spite of the non-convexity and lack of coercivity, uh, they uh, converge globally to the optimal solution. And, uh, and, and the rates are uh, sub and super linear rates. And uh, uh, I'll then uh, introduce, uh, there is connection of this, uh, the mixed design and risk sensitive controller design to uh, uh, zero sum games where now from a single agent, you go to multiple agents, in particular two agents in this case, and uh, I'll talk about uh, this also brings in uh, challenges uh, in terms of the, in what order the agents should iterate, for example. And, and this is uh, connected with uh, the popular topic of robust adversarial reinforcement learning, RARL. And I'll uh, talk about this for linear systems. And then, and then, uh, discuss a few extensions and conclusions. And I'll also uh, cite uh, two main papers uh, of ours uh, where further details could be found. And uh, I won't be able to go into it. And there is another forthcoming one which talks about sample complexity. So reinforcement learning, this community of course knows very well, uh, has achieved tremendous success in sequential decision-making problems and continuous control tasks. Uh, some examples being game of Go, video games, and, and robotics. And most of these uh, hinge on algorithmic framework of policy optimization. That's where the policy optimization comes into play. And uh, uh, here we have function approximation and, and, and it provides the ability to handle large continuous spaces. It's quite easy to implement and is scalable to high dimensional control systems. And it also enables data driven and sample based search. And, and our work is actually in all these uh, directions. Uh, some prominent examples in this context are uh, reinforce uh, is an acronym, uh, active critic algorithms, the natural policy gradient, deterministic policy gradient, trust region, policy optimization, and proximal policy optimization. So let me just very briefly uh, talk about uh, um, policy optimization for optimal control and then, and then uh, introduce robustness in that context. Uh, so the, the main optimal control problem is of course minimizing some objective function and, uh, and over an infinite horizon, let's say, and, and that's what I'm going to concentrate on, infinite horizon uh, optimization, uh, where the uh, incremental cost function uh, depends on the state uh, as well as the, the control. So U is the control and there is the state equation, uh, which is in discrete time. Of course, we can also have continuous time problems where the summation will be integral and the, and the difference equation will be replaced with uh, a differential equation. And, uh, and then we have a control constraint set for each time T depends uh, is, uh, stands for time and, and that uh, is a, uh, an element of script U. And uh, so uh, the uh, policy optimization approach, what it does is of course parameterizes the control policy 
Uh, so you have a, a general for the general nonlinear system, you will generally have a nonlinear optimal control. So so you have to have a mu some mu of x of t, and and all what we want to find out is exactly what what mu is in in uh, in the optimal control problem. And so you parameterize mu uh, in terms of some parameter theta and uh, and parameter vector theta, and then you optimize over theta. And uh, now in the linear quadratic regulator problem, of course, when you parameterize a general nonlinear system, there is you are losing something. But but in the linear quadratic regulator problem, uh, which is when f is linear and c is quadratic. And uh, uh, and there's uh, no constraint on the control, so the U is a, an m-dimensional Euclidean space. Then a natural parameterization is uh, uh, is one that is linear in in x, and so it's minus k x, where k uh, is a matrix. And and in this case, of course, uh, I mean we know that the the LQR problem admits a, a linear optimal solution. So, so this parameterization definitely does not lead to any loss of performance or, or loss of uh, generality. So, so you optimize, so the theta in this case is your, is your K. Now, uh, the downside, so you can do your optimization with respect to K. And uh, the downside here in, in approaching these design problems uh, uh, through this formulation is that you don't have robustness. The LQR is not robust to noise uh, or some modeling imprecisions in the in the state equation or the or the disturbance entering the state equation. So uh, so for that reason, uh, the community, of course, uh, this is much uh, before the reinforcement learning have. Uh, uh, addressed uh, uh, the issue of robustness. How can we robustify uh, controller designs? And uh, and and so that uh, brings in an additional sort of a constraint, which is a robustness constraint. So so it can be brought in in, in different ways, and uh, and uh, uh, so it's again can be formulated as a as an optimization problem. Now, how can we introduce robustness? There are different ways of introducing robustness, and this goes back uh, all the way to uh, 19, even 1960s, and, and mostly 70s, 80s, and 90s. One is the risk-sensitive control, and I'll uh, talk uh, more about this later. The other one is uh, H-infinity optimal control, where you bring in an H-infinity norm constraint from robust control theory, that's essentially how sensitive the output of a system is to unknown disturbances. And, uh, and you put a bound on that and obtain an optimal control uh, uh, subject to that, to that constraint. And then the, the, the other approach is the, a third approach, and these are all connected with each other, is, the, is you assume that your system has uh, a disturbance, uh, which is a model disturbance, and the disturbance is controlled by an adversary, and uh, and and so therefore, instead of a single agent, the 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 first two bullets here, the risk sensitive control and the H infinity norm constraint, this optimization, these involve a single agent optimization. Uh, here we have two agents now. Uh, the adversary and and the controller, controller playing against the adversary, and the best way to formulate these problems is through the framework of zero sum games or zero sum dynamic games, and and it turns out that actually these three uh, are connected to each other. Uh, there is an intimate connection. So if you uh, study one. Uh, uh, from the optimization point of view, you obtain results for the others, and in some cases, you have equivalence. And uh, so one way of unifying these uh, three ways is through the H2H infinity mix design, so that's going to be the bulk of my uh, talk here. So, so the, what does H2H infinity mix design mean? It's that uh, you are minimizing an H2 norm 
uh, as an as an LQR and subject to an H infinite norm constraint. So so this will become uh, clear. The challenge of uh, of course, we want to do. Uh, we want to bring in policy optimization here, and 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 uh, this will lead to model-free designs as well. And uh, and the main challenge is that uh, this constraint optimization problem is non-convex, so you cannot get uh, rid of that uh, sort of challenge. Uh, uh, and and so therefore the convex optimization techniques cannot be used for these problems. So one has to come up with uh, uh, new novel techniques of addressing policy optimization in this context. So so therefore the uh, all these problems uh, can be reinforcement learning and many optimal control problems can generally be written as in in uh, line with my. Uh, uh, earlier slide uh, as minimization of some performance index over some parameter vector and in this case k so let's say that uh, we're talking about the linear systems quadratic cost functions in this case and uh, subject to some constraint so the so the k in this case uh, um, belongs to some set constraint set again and that constraint set uh, captures the robustness property and uh, and 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 also stability property so you want k to lead to stable systems and uh, and as well as meet the uh, h infinity uh, bound h infinity constraint and then you look for a, or an optimum within that class now the this constraint set k is uh, very important when you bring in robustness considerations. And it's uh, sometimes implicit, it's not explicitly uh, introduced. So, so let's come back to the, again, the linear quadratic regulator problem as an example in discrete time. Uh, so this is uh, specifically the, the linear system and, uh, and the quadratic cost function and generally uh, the Q uh, uh, is taken uh, to be a positive definite matrix or positive semi-definite. Some detectability conditions will have to be satisfied for existence of a solution. And R is the, uh, is the weighting matrix on the controls, which is uh, taken to be positive definite. So, so the, for the LQR, what I have present, what I have formulated here uh, can be formulated, can be can be precisely uh, posed as minimization of this cost function, subject to the condition that the control is in this form, and as I indicated, the this is the, brings in no loss of generality because we know that the optimal solution is linear in X feedback solution, and uh, and subject to the condition that k is stabilized so that's the only condition in that case so script k uh, here is the spectral radius of a minus b k being less than one okay, all eigenvalues of the feedback matrix has to be uh, has to be in the unit circle and uh, now it's uh, should be clear that that this is a it's well known that uh, the script K is a non-convex constraint set. That is the set of all stabilizing gains uh, is, not a, is not a convex set. Now, other examples of K are the boundedness of Ks. We can put a, a bound on, on K on the gain. That would be an additional condition. Uh, it will be a subset of the script K. Or there could be safety constraints on the states. You, one may put uh, bounds on X, for example. Now, uh, now the, I want to bring in the robustness consideration. Most control systems are safety critical and, uh, and stability is not the only concern when you design controllers, but, but robustness is also a concern. And, uh, and one way of uh, bringing in robustness is uh, is uh, here you have a plan, and this is a standard sort of uh, uh, configuration or formulation of an H infinity optimal control problem. 
uh, where uh, this is your gain. So this is your feedback. You have the output of the plant and then uh, multiplied by K and, and then this generates the input U and, and this G is your, is your plant, but there is a perturbation delta around it. And as I indicated earlier, this could model disturbances which enter into the system, uh, unmodeled parts of uh, the plant P uh, and other types of unknowns, but, but of course you are going to have some, some bound. So the closed loop transfer function, uh, so once you close all these loops, then, then you can introduce a transfer function from W, uh, which is the input to the system, which is not under the control of the controller, and, uh, and the output Z. Okay, so let's say that uh, uh, T sub K is a representation of that, of that transfer function. So, so, the, so this is, uh, we can call this a G delta model. It, co it covers many robustness considerations in control like parametric uncertainty in A and B in the, in the linear quadratic regulator problem uh, by delta A, delta B, for example. You can have time varying parameters, A, T, B, T. You can have time varying delays in the system uh, going from the uh, output of the plan to the input. And, uh, and even uh, one can have dynamical uncertainty of unknown order. The delta could be a dynamical system, for example. And uh, so the, uh, the way to, to handle this robustness is through the H infinity norm, at least one way, important way of handling it, uh, which is a core concept in robust control. And the small gain theorem essentially tells us, uh, which is due to James, uh, uh, tells us uh, that uh, if the H infinity norm of this transfer function from W to uh, to uh, to Z uh, is less than some bound gamma, and if the perturbations in terms of the L2 norm, L2 to L2 norm, is less than one over gamma. And note that if you multiply the two, you get something less than one, so it's like a contraction mapping. Then the G delta is input output stable. Okay, so so the uh, so you are allowing you are allowing depending on 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 how much robustness you want to bring in, you are allowing some uh, uh, a lot of flexibility in the choice of delta. Other than that, it should its constraint should be less than. One over gamma. So in this case, uh, in addition to stability, we have to bring in this constraint, pk, uh, the, the uh, H infinity norm of this has to be less than gamma. Okay, so, and, and this uh, brings in a certain level of strong robust stability. We can call it robust stability because it's not only stability, but stability in the face of external uh, disturbances or unmodeled dynamics. Now note that if gamma is very, very large, then, the, then, then essentially uh, you, are not, you are not allowing for any delta here because this is uh, less, than, less than zero. And then this also drops out and, and you have the, essentially the constraint uh, set K is just the stability constraint. Now, the question is, uh, an open question is, how can we enforce uh, uh, and maintain robust stability in policy optimization uh, when we use reinforcement learning methods in, in the, uh, during the learning process? And, and can we have global convergence guarantees? And, and what would the rates of convergence uh, are? And, and, and what would, do all policy optimization methods work or do we have to be selective? How do we pick the initial conditions and so on? And uh, uh, so that's, uh, uh, these are challenging questions and, and the robust mixed design uh, uh, problem that we have and the solution that we provide for it uh, provides answers to these questions. So, so here is uh, how the formulation is. And, uh, and I should say that the, uh, uh, 
this paper that I have referenced here at the footnote, which is an archive, uh, again with Kai Ching and Bin, uh, is, uh, has the full details of what I'm going to present here, at least uh, up to the, to the game part. And, uh, uh, and it's, it's a long paper, but you can, you can uh, get it from the, from the archive library. A shorter version of this was presented as at the L4DC uh, meeting uh, at Berkeley, and, uh, uh, and it appeared in the proceedings of the machine learning research. Now, the linear dynamic systems, uh, uh, we, we have actually the paper itself deals both with continuous time as well as the discrete time problem. And uh, so this is Z is the output and uh, and uh, x is the state as always and u is the is the control but here i'm going to talk about the discrete time problem all and it's a standard assumption that the e is uh, uh, orthogonal to to c and uh, and so therefore e transpose c e is zero times the r r is the the sort of the weighting matrix for the uh, for the control and uh, and and then we all, of course, uh, have the parametrization u equals to minus kx. So once you uh, substitute all in and then use this property, a representation for the uh, 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 for the mapping from from the z uh, from w to z, and w here is the disturbance uh, controlled by an adversary, and uh, so. Uh, uh, Tk, the, the, you, can, you can have the transfer function. You can write these in terms of the transfer function uh, by uh, this is the uh, continuous time case and this hkz is the uh, discrete time one. So the h infinity norm uh, uh, is uh, in the continuous time from L2 to L2 and, uh, uh, and, and in the discrete time, small L2 to L2 operator norm from W to Z and, and defined in this way. Okay, so this is all well known to the robust control community. And as I indicated, I'll focus on the discrete time setting. So, so the mix H2H infinity control synthesis is the following problem. Therefore, you minimize a cost function. The cost function, normally it's the H2 as subject to this H infinity constraint and subject to the, uh, um, stability constraint. So we're dealing with the continuous uh, discrete time problem. And uh, so uh, instead of working with the H2, one works with an upper bound on the H2 norm. And, and that upper bound, and this goes back to the work of Bernstein and Haddad and Kargonek and Rotea and Mustafa and Bernstein and, and Kaminer, uh, in the 90s, uh, you, you have uh, the following uh, sort of simpler expression, uh, and these are equivalent, uh, is, uh, provides an upper bound for the H2 norm. And, and we can actually, uh, uh, so, so we concentrate on these, on minimizing the, these upper bounds, uh, either one, depending on the, on the problem at hand, and uh, uh, and and that provides a good good sort of a performance uh, for the original system, the the mixed H to H infinite control synthesis problem. So so the problem is minimizing. So this is J K. We want to minimize this or this uh, subject to these two constraints. And uh, and and here the P sub K solves a Riccati equation. You are given K. And, uh, and the Riccati equation is, uh, is given in this. This is the sort of the, uh, not the standard Riccati equation, but the generalized Riccati equation. So, uh, so this is uh, essentially a classical formulation of optimal control with robustness constraints. Now, I mentioned that there is connection to risk sensitive control. And, uh, and with sensitive control independent, uh, this was before the H infinity optimal control uh, theory was, was developed. 
and uh, uh, by Jacobson uh, addressed this, and then several others uh, also. Whittle was wrote a book on that uh, in the 1980s. Uh, it's a linear exponential quadratic Gaussian problem, LEQG. And uh, so, so this is instead of having a, a, a deterministic system, now you have a stochastic system. And, and so again, a linear dynamic system where W is uh, an independent Gaussian sequence. So, so N stands for normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. Initial state is uh, again, zero mean and, and variance, covariance exterior and W is the covariance of WT and, uh, and, and you have independence. Uh, the WT is an independent sequence also independent of X0. So, the, uh, so what the, uh, this linear exponential Gaussian problem does, of course, without the, if you take just the standard quadratic cost function, then this is the LQG problem. And, and we know that for the LQG problem, the solution is the same, the controller is the same as the LQR problem. And, and so a, a linear sort of an additive noise here does not change the nature of the solution. Now, the, uh, in the LEQG, what you do is you again take the standard uh, uh, quadratic cost, uh, you uh, multiply it by some parameter, positive parameter, beta over two, but before you take the expectation, you take uh, the exponential of that. So exponential, what it does is, of course, the, it uh, is not a linear uh, transformation. It uh, puts more weight on uh, larger values of this, uh, uh, of this quantity. And then you, you take the logarithm uh, just to bring it down to the uh, same level so that comparisons could be made with others. For example, if I don't have an exponential, then of course the log x Financial, they are reciprocals of each other. And then you have two over beta uh, just to neutralize this. And then the, and then one over T, the, you divide it by the length of the time interval and then let T go to infinity. So limp soup of this is J. So uh, a, one can show that the, the, the solution actually does not exist for all beta. There has to be an upper limit on beta. And, and this is the this is sort of the risk uh, attainment. And uh, uh, if if uh, an individual uh, is uh, uh, too pessimistic, for example, then the the outcome then that will correspond to a very large values of beta, and then the outcome will be uh, j will be infinite. So so we have to uh, for the problem to be meaningful, we have to let beta be less than beta star. And one can show that there always exists such a beta star such that uh, for all beta larger, less than that, the minimum of J exists. And the solution is the optimal control is linear in the state. And, uh, and so with, if, I, if we take Q to be C transpose C and W to be D, D transpose and, and U to be minus K X T, the LEQG feasible set coincides with this. So, so you have, instead of being less than gamma, gamma corresponds to square root of one over square root of beta, or gamma squared uh, corresponds to one over beta. And uh, so, uh, so we can, so therefore we know if we want, now instead of looking at the mixed, uh, H2H H infinity problem, if we just want to do parameter uh, optimization over K or policy optimization, the same thing, because this determines the policy uniquely because of the linear solution. And then, then we can uh, uh, do a search uh, over, uh, over K, the same K, constraint. And so we have a modified Bellman equation or the algebraic, generalized algebraic Riccati equation for LEQR. And, uh, and this lemma says that for any LTI state feedback controller, 
and note that the LTI state feedback controller is optimal for this problem, such that this uh, generalized algebraic Riccati equation admits a solution which is non-negative definite, which further satisfies uh, it, it uh, stabilizing uh, stabilizability question, which is which is this, and also satisfies this condition. Then JK has the form of this, which is exactly the same form that we had in the H2, in the upper bound of the H2, H infinity optimization problem. Now there are other models, uh, so, so we have this. So we have shown that therefore, this is exactly the, uh, by solving this, you also are solving the uh, LEQG problem. It also covers maximum entropy, H infinity control, the Glover and Doyle had worked on that and, and Mustafa in the late 1980s. And as well as, uh, I'll discuss this a bit later, the linear quadratic zero sum dynamic games. There is an equivalence to that and which is discussed in my book with, uh, with Bernard, H infinity optimal control. Now for this, uh, what you do is, uh, instead of the original linear system, uh, you add a disturbance, uh, dVt, where Vt is, is controlled by an adversary. And, uh, and then you, as an objective function, you have the standard objective function, but then you put some uh, soft constraint on the adversary's control, minus comma squared Vt transpose Vt. And then the initial state has some distribution. So you take the expected value over that. And uh, what one is interested in is, is finding the control which uh, uh, infimizes this, minimizes this for the worst possible choices of V. And uh, uh, it turns out that the solution to this problem is also linear in X, as well as the worst case V also turns out to be linear in, in X. So, so therefore there is a strong connection to LEQG for this problem where you choose gamma squared to be one over beta or beta to be one over gamma squared. The optimal policies are identical. The only thing is uh, somewhat of a semantics difference that uh, for the zero sum game, of course you have a second agent and that second agent is a linear control minus LX okay, for the maximizer. Now note that as gamma goes to infinity, this reduces to LQR because you are putting infinite weight on the adversary. So the, essentially the adversary's control is zero in this case. And, uh, and, then, and then you end up minimizing this uh, uh, one. So essentially the adversarial agent is kicked out of the, the problem or out of the game. So, uh, so now, the, so what I have shown is that this is the, a critical problem, that by solving this, uh, you, uh, you would be finding a solution to the, to the LEQG problem and uh, as well as to some extent to the, to the game problem. So, so here is the, therefore the full sort of formulation of the problem. We want to minimize JK subject to these conditions where J is given in this form. And, uh, and P sub K solves the generalized algebraic Riccati equation is a solution to this uh, given K. Okay, so now the, uh, let me uh, just talk a little bit about the difficulties in uh, finding a policy optimization algorithm uh, to, uh, uh, to approach this problem. Uh, so what I have here is the, is the stability. First of all, this is for the uh, linear quadratic regulator. Uh, the dotted line is the stability region. And, uh, and, and you are either, you start with a K which is stabilizing and then you use your policy optimization in order to obtain the next value of K through some iteration. And, and, and you always stay actually in the stability region. 
or you can, uh, and, and this is the optimum solution. And, and if you go to the boundary of the stability region, you cannot actually, because it is, uh, the cost will become infinite. Now, for the H2H infinity control problem, it is quite possible, and there are many examples, uh, where at the next, so this is now the, uh, the uh, constraint region, which is the stability plus the H infinity uh, constraint bound. And it's quite possible that, that uh, at the next iteration, you could go to the boundary of this. And, and there's no way the algorithm will, uh, will catch that. And, and this is again the optimal solution here. So, uh, so this is uh, the, uh, we have again, as I indicated earlier, we have non-convexity and non-coercivity here. The, the H2H infinite mixed design problem over this, uh, this uh, robust stability region is non-convex. And, and it's also non-coercive in the sense that as K goes to the boundary of uh, K, boundary of the constraint set, J does not necessarily approach infinity. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a challenge. In, in, uh, in contrast, in the LQR, the JK descent cannot ensure. Uh, in, in contrast to LQR, uh, just uh, decreasing the value of J uh, uh, will not ensure feasibility. Then the question is, how can we enforce K during the learning process? So, so what uh, uh, three possible algorithms, uh, the policy gradient, and these all depend on the gradient of J and, and have different sort of uh, uh, directions in which the iterations are done. Uh, policy gradient, natural policy gradient, and Gauss-Newton, and where lambda sub k is the uh, unique solution to this, uh, to the Lyapunov equation. And so, the, so these are the uh, the candidate uh, update schemes that we took, and and uh, the the natural PG is uh, actually a, a policy gradient over a Riemannian manifold. And, uh, and the Gauss-Newton with eta equals, to, if we take eta is the step size parameter to be one half, it reduces the policy iteration for LQ games. And uh, so normally one does regularization. That is, you want to make sure that the iterates are confined to script K, to the constraint region. That's to be robustly stable, but, but uh, we cannot uh, use projection for that because, because script K is, is non-convex. Now, interestingly, and, and this is something we show in the paper, that the natural policy gradient and the Gauss-Newton methods, they implicitly regularize the iterates and they preserve robust stability automatically. And, uh, and so, uh, provided that you take the... Uh, uh, the step sizes to satisfy some conditions. Suppose the step size eta satisfies the, for the Gauss-Newton to is less than or equal to one half, and for the natural uh, PG to be less than or equal to this quantity, where K zero is the initial choice of, of K, uh, which is in the robustly stabilizing region. Then uh, K, uh, if, if K is at any point of the iteration is in the robustly stabilizing region, then the, the next iteration, it remains in the robustly stabilizing region. So this is the sort of the implicit regularization. And, uh, but, but general descent directions of JK do not work, but certain specific directions as we have seen here work. Uh, the, the proof of, of this, uh, I don't have time to, uh, to go over the proof, but, uh, but the, essentially the bounded real lemma is the, is the main tool. Uh, it allows, uh, as we know, the frequency domain constraint uh, to be replaced by algebraic conditions. And, and these three conditions are actually 
equal. So here you have a Likate inequality, uh, rather strict inequality rather than an uh, equality. Okay, so uh, uh, this, uh, the proof is based on LMI uh, and, and using bounded real lemma, which allows us to go from Likate equation to strict Likate inequality. So we construct a solution to a non-strict Likate inequality and plus perturb around it and and then and then lead to a strict Riccati inequality and then use bounded real lemma. So the so the global convergence uh, result is the following. Suppose you start with an, an initial uh, k uh, in the in that constraint set uh, with finite norm and uh, uh, also assume that uh, this pair uh, is uh, controllable at the stationary point K. Then under the step size choices I had earlier on the previous slide, both the Gauss-Newton and the natural policy gradient updates converge to global optimum with and, uh, one over N ray in the order of one over N ray. The controllability assumption here follows from Mustafa and Bernstein. And, and for the LEQG problem, it's automatically satisfied. So if you want to uh, state uh, a counterpart of this theorem for LEQG, you don't have to put in the controllability assumption. And, uh, and uh, the thing as compared with LQR as in uh, Fazel's paper with co-authors in 2018, uh, there is no global gradient domination here, whereas as you have it in LQR. And uh, uh, now you can uh, obtain faster local rates, that super linear rates, around the optimum. Okay, if you are, if you start close enough to the optimum. I'm going to uh, the, uh, skip the simulations. You can find these in the in the paper. And, and go to the next uh, in the remaining time, and I don't have much time left, but go to the to discuss the reinforcement learning to multi-agent reinforcement learning for, for zero-sum games. So as I indicated, the H infinity control is connected to linear quadratic zero-sum games. And the linear quadratic zero-sum games, as I had formulated earlier, you have a, a system, linear system, uh, where you have uh, this x actually should be uh, should be v, and uh, and and then uh, so a x t plus b u t plus d v t, uh, and uh, and here as I indicated earlier the solution, which is the saddle point solution or you can call it the Nash Nash solution, is is linear for both agents, for the controller as well as the adversary. So, so you have minus kx uh, and minus lx. And, uh, and so this is the cost function as I indicated. So you substitute in this is the u part and this is the v part and, uh, and with a minus sign and with some weighting on the, on the disturbance. So these are all past the definite matrices. And so the, the problem is we're looking at minimizing this with respect to K and maximizing with respect to L. So uh, the so you can formulate it in this form, but for this, uh, we al also know that actually the min max equals to, to max min in the, in, the, in the space of general policies. And, uh, but, but the, the actual, the worst case analysis dictates that we minimize with respect to the control gain the worst value of the cost uh, over the, all adversary controls. So, so this uh, is uh, uh, bringing in a, a sort of a zero sum formulation. We have seen this uh, within the context of robust adversarial uh, reinforcement learning, which is uh, uh, bringing an adversary. It's a, quite a popular approach in RL uh, to uh, handle the, uh, the gap from simulation to, to real experiments. And, and by 
introducing the uh, adversary. And this has been done in the Markov decision process formulation, but not with uh, continuous uh, spaces as, as here. And uh, so uh, you, there are two optimizations. Now, now if you want to uh, introduce policy optimization for this problem, you are going to minimize, have an algorithm for K and also an algorithm as L. And the question is in what order are the agents going to uh, iterate? And, uh, and, and we call this uh, for fix K, uh, which is an outer loop, we can take maximum with respect to L. Uh, and then let's assume that you have the exact maximum for each K, you have the exact maximizing L and which is going to be unique. Uh, then the, uh, this uh, uh, equation uh, becomes, uh, uh, this the Apfelov equation becomes a, a Riccati equation, which is the same Riccati equation as in H2H infinity control. Okay, the same algebraic Riccati equation. So, so here for each K you are optimizing with respect to L, but exactly. Now, uh, Again, this is a non-convex, non-concave problem in, in KL, and, and policy optimization for that reason is, is, is hard. Now, one uh, approach one may suggest is, is alternating gradient, gradient, descent, ascent. So which means that you, you start with a K, you don't obtain the exactly optimizing choice for L, but you go, you use some policy optimization and then to go to the next step. And then the, the controller comes in and taking that value of L optimizes, uh, takes using again the same or a different uh, uh, policy optimization algorithm to uh, reach the second iterate for K. And then you alternate this way. Now one can show that this often fails when you start with random initialization of stabilizing K and L. And, and these, uh, the, uh, uh, this is all discussed, uh, since I don't have that much time to go into the details, uh, we have a paper at, uh, uh, at NIPS uh, upcoming uh, in 2020, uh, in, in December, uh, again with uh, Kai Ching and, and, and Bin, and on the stability and convergence of robust adversarial reinforcement learning. So you can find the details there. But what these figures show is that, look, uh, if it hits here, then it means it leaves the stability region. And, and so therefore you start with arbitrary iterations and then the row of A minus B, K minus C, L. So that's the stability note that the, the adversary comes in as an, as an uh, additional, brings in an additional input. And so therefore you have minus CL here. After a certain number of iterations, it uh, uh, escapes to the boundary of the stability region in all cases. So, so if, you, if you stop somewhere here, for example, this may be this deceiving uh, that uh, you have uh, stability. It may indicate that you do have stability but that's in fact not the case. If you run the algorithm, then, then you again escaped the stability region. So this is, uh, this is bad news. Alternating gradient and gradient descent asset does not work. And the, and the question is, so the, the initialization will be important, will be a determining factor, and the update will, will be a determining factor. Now, we have already seen that because of implicit regularization, we are not worried about outer loop stability if we use the algorithms that I presented earlier. And uh, because we can always find a robustly stabilizing K. And, and so therefore what we need uh, is, is a provably converging pair of initialization and update rule. And, uh, and this is what we call double loop. Uh, you uh, start initialization, uh, you can always start L0, uh, L at zero, that is no adversarial input, and K0 uh, is an element uh, somewhere in this constraint region. 
and uh, uh, and so uh, we we have uh, developed uh, a derivative free method for decreasing the h infinity norm that is robustifying k zero to be inside k. So so the uh, in uh, here, these simulations show that the, you have the decrease in H infinity norm. Uh, and uh, if you don't robustify, then, then you could, uh, this is where K is robust is stabilizing, but then you can, you can easily run outside the stability region. Whereas if you use the robustified uh, initialization and the, and the, uh, and the robust K zero, and do a policy uh, optimization for L in the uh, in an exact fashion, then then you converge to the optimal solution. So uh, so the benefit from the game formulation is that we have a model free H two H infinity controller design, and and note that the policy gradient was this, but but the delta k here. Uh, cannot be estimated from sample trajectories without knowing the model. So therefore, this doesn't work the, the model-free uh, sort of approach to H to H infinity. From that angle, it doesn't work. But uh, if we approach it from the game angle, instead of uh, if we solve the equivalent game using state action trajectories, then, then we can have derivative-free policy optimization methods. And, and you are you build up a virtual adversary and uh, and then double loop or nested gradient can be used, fixing K, improving L and then improving K. And we have uh, also shown in a, another, this is the third paper in a forthcoming paper on sample complexity, we have shown that for finite horizon time varying system, sample complexity can be established for these problems. And this is still non-convex and non-concave, and and these problems do not have global smoothness or gradient domination. So that's what were the challenges that we had to overcome. So let me conclude. Uh, uh, we now have a, a much better theoretical understanding of policy-based methods in learning for robust control and robust with sensitive reinforcement learning. We have advocated the use of H infinity norm constraints in assuring strong robustness for reinforcement learning in continuous control tasks. We have a global convergence theory for policy gradient methods for mixed H to H infinity control inferences, and as a special case for with sensitive optimal control. And we have established implicit regularization property of two policy optimization methods, and they preserve robust stability during learning. This is for the mixed uh, H2H infinity problem. And we have also established guarantees of policy optimization methods, parallel versus inner outer loop updates for linear quadratic zero-sum dynamic games, which provides a baseline for multi-agent reinforcement learning setting. Now we, we are working, uh, we have some results as in that forthcoming on sample complexity. We still have uh, continuing work on that. Uh, mixed design for other types of dynamical systems. Uh, we have policy optimization. Uh, we don't ha have that, but, but that's uh, a challenge. Policy optimization for H infinity optimal control itself. That is, you want to minimize uh, the H infinity norm instead of using it as a as a bond. This is a non-smooth problem, so this is a challenging problem. And at the higher level, how can we enforce safety robustness constraints on the fly in policy-based model-free reinforcement learning in general? So these are the things. So I'll stop here. Thanks. I think I took about fifty-five minutes, and uh, I would be. Uh, Happy to answer any questions you may have. And, and if we don't have time, uh, enough time, then you can also email questions to me and uh, I can also send you uh, those references, the three or two references, two critical references that this talk was based on.
Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. So in the interest of time, we can only have a few quick questions. So there's a question from uh, Guan Yashi from Caltech. He's asking, uh, since some LQG and LQR systems are inherently very fragile to arbitrarily small disturbance, so how do we make sure that the mixed design problem is feasible for a given finite gamma? For what? I didn't get the, the last part. Oh, just uh, for a given uh, finite value of gamma, how do we even know that the mixed design problem is feasible? Oh, the, the, well, uh, uh, if it is not, I mean, the, uh, assuming that you know the model itself, there are uh, techniques in uh, in H infinity optimal control which will tell you exactly uh, what the uh, gamma star is. That is, uh, you cannot go below a certain level for gamma. And uh, so, so the the assumption is that you you do know that value of gamma, uh, which is let's say gamma star. Then in a design. Uh, if you formulate the problem, the standard H infinity optimal control problem for a gamma larger than that critical value, then, then it has a linear solution, which can be obtained through the Riccati the equation. So, so, the, so the general approach is uh, uh, to, uh, there are different ways of knowing what gamma star is uh, and to pick a gamma that you are comfortable with. As far as the, of course, as I indicated, when you let gamma all the way to infinity, then that is the non-robust problem. That is the LQR problem, and and so there is a range of values for gamma, and but you cannot take it all the way to zero, uh, because because it has to be larger than that value. It's the same thing as an LEQG problem, where the beta has to be smaller than some value beta star and there are ways of obtaining what that value is and uh, so uh, of course if you if for some reason uh, you start with a gamma which is smaller than gamma star then then it will give you an infinite cost and you know that you are not you are not doing you are not in the right region because it's infeasible um I guess I have another question. So sure. uh, for the uh, H2 H infinity uh, and also for the uh, LEQG problem, uh, how is it possible to sample the value of the cost function? Seems to me that the mixed design problem, uh, the cost function depends on the PK and then PK is the, is the solution to the on the real lemma, which may not be easy to sample from the data. And also for the LEQG, uh, the expectation is inside of the log. So if we do sample, how do we make sure that the value is, uh, is unbiased estimate of the cost function in LEQG? Well, that's, uh, that's why I said, uh, I mean, the, the, the sampling and sample complex, the data-driven aspect is still, is still under study. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, game one, the two agent one, was introduced uh, partly for that purpose because there you can do, you can have a data driven approach. And that's mm -hmm. the, that's the, the uh, point that I wanted to emphasize. That's uh, with uh, uh, robust adversarial RL, which is, which is what that approach is. I see, I you, see. Can, you can bring in, you can bring in the uh, sampling and then analyze sample complexity as well. I see. Okay. Okay. I see. Uh, Kachin also uh, replied that in the okay. In the chat. Yeah. So I, I guess in the interest of time, uh, there's a few other questions. But unfortunately, we are not able to cover that. So uh, let's thank uh, speaker Professor Bashar again for this wonderful talk. So uh, next week we'll have uh, Professor Jeff Sama, and uh, also next Wednesday. So uh, see you guys next week. Thanks again, okay. Professor. Patrick. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.